Hey everyone, so today I'm going to talk about the termination of DNA transcription in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. And I would also request you to watch my previous video on DNA transcription, initiation and elongation. So let's first talk about transcription termination in prokaryotes. So there are basically two types of transcription termination mechanisms in prokaryotes. First, which is dependent on one specific protein, uh, which is called rho protein. So therefore, it is called rho dependent termination. And second, which is independent of rho dependent, uh, independent of rho termination. So therefore, it is called intrinsic termination. So let's first talk about the intrinsic termination in prokaryotes. So here we have a DNA double strand and the top strand is the non-template strand and the bottom strand in the, is, is the template strand. And on this here, uh, you can see there are two highlighted regions. Um, they are called GC rich regions, uh, as well as we also have here AT rich regions. And in order for termination to occur, uh, this region must be transcribed into the newly synthesized mRNA strand, which is also called as nascent mRNA. And here you can see that because this is mRNA strand, so the adenine of DNA, uh, adenine from uh, template DNA strand is transcribed into uracil, which is a ribonucleotide. Now these GC rich regions, they are called uh, inverted repeat and most importantly, they are self complementary because they can form base pairing despite of being on the same strand. Now the region in between of the inverted repeat, they are non-complementary base because they cannot form the base pairing. Now due to the self-complementary feature of these GC rich regions, the RNA strand can fold on itself and create this weird looking structure here. In this you can see that there is a base pairing between G and C uh, of the inverted repeats and that is called GC rich stem because it resembles like a stem and the bottom structure here which is the circular structure which is resemble which is resemble like a loop so therefore it is called helping loop or stem loop structure so now in order for transcription to occur the GC rich stem loop structure must be formed so here we have this uh, 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 stem loop structure formation on the DNA template and second there is also a weak base pairing between the adenine of the template strand and the uracil of the um, uh, of the RNA transcript which is located uh, close to the 3 prime end of the mRNA strand now because of this uh, uh, stem loop structure what will happen that the stem loop structure displaces the a weak base pairing of adenine and uracil and create a very stable base pairing between the adenine of the template strand and thymine of the non-template strand. Again, because there is a weak base pairing between adenine and uracil, the stem loop structure displaces this weak base pairing and forms a very stable base pairing between the adenine of the DNA template strand and the thym and thymine of the DNA non-template strand. So this stable base pairing between adenine and thymine result into the zipping up of these two DNA strands. In other words, the stable base pairing can also lead to the closing of the uh, transcription bubble. So as these two DNA, uh, as these two DNA strands are zipping up, that will result in the dissociation of this mRNA transcript from the D, uh, from the DNA template strand, and this will eventually lead to the termination of the DNA transcript in prokaryotes. So this is the first method uh, of uh, intrinsic termination in prokaryotes. Now let's talk about the rho dependent uh, termination in prokaryotes. So here we have a 
uh, DNA double strand uh, same way the top strand is the non template strand and the bottom green strand is the template strand and here we also have the the blue strand which is the mrna strand now this is the transcription bubble and uh, during the transcription this so the the short stretch of rna also wrapped around the dna template strand and and that this small region is called rna dna hybrid duplex and on the DNA strand, there is a C-rich region, which is uh, actually a binding site for rho protein and which is also transcribed uh, into the mRNA. Now, the rho protein has a ATP dependent helicase activity. So, which is, this is an important information and we'll see uh, why this is important uh, for uh, for transcription termination in prokaryotes. So in order for uh, termination to occur, rho protein recognizes the C-rich region on the mRNA transcript and bind to this C-rich region. Uh, once the uh, rho protein binds to the mRNA transcript, it then advances from five prime direction to three prime direction until it reaches the transcription bubble on the um, on the mRNA transcript and once it reaches the transcription bubble because it has this ATP dependent helicase activity it will start to unwind both DNA uh, both RNA transcript and DNA template so you can see that because it has this helicase activity uh, it that results in the unwinding of both mRNA and uh, DNA template strand and as a result eventually the mRNA strand is released uh, as well as it also results in the termination of uh, a transcription in prokaryotes. So this is the transcription termination in prokaryotes. First we learned about the intrinsic termination and this is the rho dependent termination. Now let's talk about the transcription termination in eukaryotes. So here we have a, a DNA double helix uh, and this is the transcription bubble and here we have RNA polymerase 2 enzyme. So while uh, so RNA polymerase 2 enzymes continue elongating the pre-mRNA in eukaryotes until it encounters a specific sequence which is shown here and this sequence uh, shown here is called polyadenylation signal or a cleavage signal. And as soon as the uh, RNA polymerase 2 enzyme encounters this polyadenylation signal, the endonuclease enzymes start uh, to cleave the mRNA strand. Almost 10 to 35 nucleotides downstream of the polyadenylation signal. And once the mRNA strand is cleaved, the poly A polymerase enzyme start to add poly A tail on the three prime end of the pre mRNA strand. And one important thing to remember that poly A polymerase enzyme start adding the poly A tail in a template independent manner. It is a template independent because the poly A tail is added after the mRNA strand is cleaved off. That means it, it does not use the uh, DNA strand as a template to add this poly A tail. Therefore, it is important to remember that uh, the poly A tail is added in a template independent manner. And once the poly A tail is added onto the three prime end of the pre mRNA strand, the transcription termination process is completed in eukaryotes. So this is the transcription termination process both in eukaryotes and prokaryotes. All right. So now I just want to quickly talk about some basics which are important when we talk about uh, DNA transcription in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So this is the structural organization of a prokaryotic gene. So the one 
which is highlighted in yellow that is the coding region or the transcribed region so this coding region contains more than one gene and particularly in this case it contains uh, multiple genes so these genes are then eventually transcribed into one single mrna and then this mrna and is then translated into proteins uh, and that is multiple proteins because each gene will be tra uh, eventually translated uh, into uh, one protein so there are five genes here so we have um, five proteins however on the other hand uh, in eukaryotes so this is the transcribed by the coding region of uh, eukaryotic gene so the coding region of eukaryotic gene only contains one gene and so this is one gene which also contains exons and introns so exons are used for protein synthesis whereas introns they are not used for uh, they cannot be used for protein synthesis and i will be talking about this in detail in my next next uh, subsequent video which is on post transcriptional modification of rna so therefore i'm not going to cover this in detail here so so this gene which contains both exons and introns they are eventually transcribed into pre mrna and it is called pre mrna because the introns which are not used for protein synthesis therefore the introns must be excised uh, to form mrna so therefore the pre mrna is then undergo post transcriptional modification uh, and through this process the introns will be excised and exons will be uh, retained and to form a uh, mrna and this mrna is then eventually translated into one single protein because this is one single gene and eventually that will be translated into one single protein so the important take home message from this is when mrna carries information from more than one gene is called polycystronic and this is a typical characteristic of prokaryotes whereas mrna which carries information from only one gene is called monocystronic and that is a, a characteristic of eukaryotes now the another important thing to consider is uh, the mrna in prokaryotes uh, does not undergo post transcriptional modification so therefore while mrna is still being synthesized the 5 prime m of the 5 prime end of the mrna can be used for protein synthesis so meaning uh, meaning the the protein synthesis and mrna synthesis are kind of taking place at the same time whereas in eukaryotes because the pre pre mrna has to go through post transcriptional modification it cannot be used for uh, protein synthesis unless it is it goes through this modification and lastly i just want to quickly talk about the clinical relevance so there is an antibiotic called rifampin so rifampin is used in the treatment of tuberculosis and it inhibits rna synthesis in bacteria so what it does that rifampin basically binds to the beta subunit of uh, rna polymerase core enzyme and if you remember from my previous video that beta subunit of rna polymerase core enzyme is important for rna synthesis by forming the phosphodiester bond between two nucleotides so by binding to beta subunit it interferes in formation of the phosphodiester bond and therefore it inhibits rna synthesis and there is an another antibiotic uh, which is called tectinomycin or actinomycin d and uh, this is this is the first antibiotic to find therapeutic application in tumor chemotherapy and what it does that it actually inhibit rna synthesis by directly binding to dna template strand so by binding to dna template strand it interferes in the movement of rna polymerase enzyme along the dna template strand and inhibits the rna synthesis 
however it lacks some specificity in uh, prokaryotes and therefore um, often time actinomycin d is being used as a laboratory tool uh, to study rna synthesis so this concludes our lesson on transcription termination in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes and i really hope that you enjoyed this video and most importantly you learn something new from this video and if you do so please like and share the video and subscribe the channel and i will see you next time thank you so much